Greetings, I'm your host, Dr. Wolfula, with a review of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre video game. No, not that one. The new, slightly better one, released in 2023. Developed by Sumo Digital and published by Gun Interactive, the latter of which had a hand in the pretty much dead Friday the 13th game which was also an asymmetrical game, or as I like to call them, asymmetrical. Those were the two red flags for me when the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game was first announced. It's yet another asymmetrical multiplayer game based on a beloved horror film series. A lot of people do like that kind of game, and a lot of people don't like that kind of game. And then you have folks like me who are ambivalent towards this category of video game, but we're sick of fucking seeing our favorite horror movies adapted in the same style of game over and over again. We want something different for once. Then, of course, Gun Interactive published Friday the 13th The Game, and it was fun, but a totally janky mess that was unfinished upon release, and they had plenty of time to get it finished, but that didn't end up happening before the convenient legal issues took place that gave them an out. <laughs> which didn't leave me with a lot of confidence in Gunn working on another game of this nature based on another horror movie. Technically, though, Ilphonic was the actual developer of that Friday the 13th game. Gunn only published it, and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game was developed by Sumo Digital, a developer with a longer, more varied background in producing video games. So there was a chance it could be better and more polished than Friday the 13th the game was under a more experienced crew. I guess a third red flag also is the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre is my favorite horror movie of all time, but as a franchise, it fucking sucks. I only like the first two sequels, and everything after has broken my heart. Do your thing, cuz! This factor made me a little more untrusting of the game. Try anything you cancel, bro. So is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, despite being yet another asymmetrical game, actually decent in its execution of its genre, and does it do justice with the film it shares its title with? Savage as fuck! Let's find out in my review of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. But first, I have a message from my sponsor. Me! Pledge to my Patreon today to support the channel, help it continue to grow, and you'll also get access to weekly movie nights every Sunday, and archive commentaries if you miss the movie nights live. Just five bucks a month to get a movie night every week. Pledge to patreon.com slash drwolfula if you're interested, and I thank you in advance. <laughs> <laughs> The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is surprisingly bare-bones for a game that retails for $40. There's only one mode of play, Chainsaw Massacre. If you were hoping for anything single-player or offline, it's not here. You can't do practice matches against bots, and there isn't even a playable tutorial to break down how to play the game before you go online. The quote-unquote tutorials are just a series of boring instructional videos. It's up to you to secure the property and stop victims from escaping. The game definitely doesn't have a campaign or even missions, but the one multiplayer mode included does at least have a slight backstory that tries to tie into the original movie, as explained by the not-John Larroquette who narrates the game's opening. The events surrounding Maria's disappearance would be just one of the many bizarre crimes later known as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This game takes place a little while before the original film. A young girl named Maria Flores has gone missing near the town of Newt, Texas, and her sister Anna and Anna's friends come looking for Maria, only to end up captured by the family. In the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you can choose to play as either the family, murderous cannibals on the hunt, or the victims, who are just trying to escape the family's property. You have five family members and five victims to choose from, all with their own unique strengths, weaknesses, and abilities. The victims are all original characters, Anna, Julie, Connie, Leland, and Sonny. These characters are authentic to the look of the original movie with their 70s fashion, but as characters, they're nothing special. With the Friday the 13th game, there were certain characters I was drawn to more than others, but with this game, I don't really care that much which victim I play as beyond the stats they're sporting. <gasps> What's going on? What's going what on? is this place? The real highlight of the game is playing as the family, which of course consists of Leatherface, the hitchhiker, and the cook from the original film. Oh, and uh, Johnny and Sissy. You remember the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie where Johnny and Sissy appeared in, right? 
You do? Well, that's fucking insane because it doesn't actually exist. Yeah, the game introduces two original family members created in collaboration with series co-creator Kim Hankel. Johnny is essentially supposed to be a knockoff of Ted Bundy, a charismatic psycho. <laughs> and Sissy is supposed to be a kind of Manson family thing, a crazed cult member, but it really just feels like a Sherry Moon zombie character. Oh, sugar, does that hurt? <laughs> the new killer characters aren't horrible, but they're not very interesting, and their blandness makes them really stick out next to the three iconic characters. I knew I should have handled this myself. I'll fix it. You might be wondering why this game had to make original killers and not bring in some fan favorite characters from the sequels like Chop Top. Hey, lick my plate, you dog dick! And the answer is, well, Gun Interactive only has the rights to use material from the original film. They couldn't use any material from sequels because the sequels are all owned by different studios, and Gun probably didn't have enough of a budget to license anything from the sequels, but they wanted more of a variety of killers to choose from. So so they had to make their own. Still, I wish that the two killers they had to come up with themselves were a little, uh, cooler, but maybe if this game is successful, they'll have the cash to license Chop Top or what have you for DLC. I'm the Lord of the Harvest. Who's that? Some new health food bunch? But we'll see, I guess. Uh, I will say, though, that only having one movie to work with does put this game on better legal footing than the Friday the 13th game, at the very least. <sighs> Too dang old and worn out for this nonsense. Why is this on me to fix? The characters that are in this game are pretty well realized, both with their voices and motion capture animation. Jason Voorhees veteran Kane Hodder does the motion capture for Leatherface, returning to the franchise after performing stunts on the third chainsaw flick. Edwin Neal returns to voice the Hitchhiker, the only brother from the original film who is still alive, and it's great to have him back as the Hitchhiker, seeing as the sequels couldn't allow for it. But his voice has changed quite a bit in 50 years. You like Hitchies? My brother makes it real good. You like it? Too bad Grandpa ain't able. He was the best there ever was. I thought it was a voice actor impersonating him at first, but it's fine. Christina Klebe plays the new family member, Sissy, and Scout Taylor Compton plays the victim, Julie. Both actresses from Rob Zombie's Halloween, and they're okay in the game, but I'm guessing somebody making this game was a fan of that Halloween remake. New chairs to wear? Yeah. So I'm like, hey, why don't we just rack a commando flash some <laughs> snack? <laughs> Moving past the characters and into the game, things are pretty straightforward. If you play as a victim, you and three other players start a match hung upside down in a basement. You need to free yourself from your restraints as quickly and silently as possible, find an exit out of the basement, and ultimately escape from the family's property. As a victim, the game is all about stealth, prioritizing it more than most games of its type. You have to wander silently or you'll be given away, which sounds simple, but there are plenty of noisemakers you need to avoid that can give your location away. Caged chickens, hanging bones, which are realistic and authentic to the movie. But then there's a uh, grandpa. At the start of a match, only Leatherface can hunt you down in the basement, but if you make too much noise, it wakes up Grandpa and he'll periodically scream, revealing your location to his descendants wandering around the map and allowing non-Leatherface killers to slaughter you too. I may have been watching a different Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, but I don't remember Grandpa being able to see through walls or even yelling, but whatever, I guess. Uh... Oh, Grandpa is the best killer there ever was. If you manage to escape the basement as a victim by picking a lock undetected, you still need to find a way to exit out of the map above ground. There are multiple exits above ground and below ground with different ways to access them, but here's where there's another inconsistency with the movie. The above ground exits are electrified gates you need to turn off. Since this is a prequel, I don't know why they wouldn't have been used in the original movie. Could have come in real handy when Sally escaped just by running away. I'm admittedly not great at stealth games where I'm not playing as Batman, and this is a particularly challenging stealth game with human enemies instead of predictable AI. <laughs> So I've only managed to escape once as a victim so far, activating a fuse box that opens a tunnel in the basement that for some reason would lead to freedom. 
Playing as a victim in this game is brutal. You start out mortally wounded, slowly bleeding out, and your blood reveals your location. So your death is inevitable unless you escape, and you need to periodically heal yourself regardless of whether or not you've been attacked by a player, or you'll eventually just succumb to your injuries. Oh well. He got me. Playing as a victim is intentionally stacked against you. Most of your actions are slow button taps so you don't alert family members with noise, and depending on the character you play, you have few options to defend yourself. You can hide in coolers or cabinets, but that's only a last resort if running is absolutely not an option. Jumping down a well back into the basement is especially not recommended if you can avoid it. You lose health and progress. Being a victim is intentionally challenging in this game to simulate being in a horror movie. From the victim's perspective, they're called victims for a reason. And it works well on that level, and it is admittedly exhilarating when you do briefly elude a killer or even escape. But I don't know, I feel like it takes a particular glutton for punishment to repeatedly give another player the opportunity to fulfill their torture and murder fantasies against you until you get good enough to actually escape sometimes. But, you know, dying in this game doesn't really feel bad. Whether you win or lose, you still get the same screen of Leatherface dancing at the end of a match. Look at him go! I guess a better way to approach playing as a victim in this game is by looking at it as making a horror movie. It's very unlikely everyone will survive. That would make for a boring horror movie after all. Most of you will die, but maybe one or even two will survive. Most of the time you'll die, but when you do survive, you'll feel pretty good about it. Still, it's kind of a pain in the ass to play as a victim, and because you're not forced to have to play as a victim, I do kind of wonder if the game will have a decent amount of players down the road who will want to play as a victim. Early on, I've had some lobbies where it took a while to find a fourth victim for a match. It doesn't look like a good sign of things to come. Well, at least you don't have to play as Franklin in this game. Yet. I have any more fun today. I don't think I'm gonna be able to take it. <laughs> Still, I'm not into stealth, so playing as a victim is not my kind of thing. But playing as a member of the family is a different story. During a match, three players assume the roles of family members, which sets the game apart from other asymmetrical games and also adds to the challenge playing as the victims. There's nearly as many family members as there are victims, and the family characters can actually fuck you up. A requirement of the family, though, is that one player has to play as Leatherface, and you can't have multiples of the same character in a match. You'll never see multiple Leatherfaces or Hitchhikers running around, and choosing a character is first come, first serve. But you can request character swaps, and I always got the character I really wanted to play. I assume Leatherface would be ultra popular to play as, and I'd almost never get to play him. But any match I wanted to play as Leatherface, I got to play as him. At the start of a match, if you are Leatherface, you're still stuck in the huge basement looking for the victims, getting an early kill in, or trying to get them to make enough noise. And you can't leave unless Grandpa gives you the all clear. If you're one of Leatherface's relatives, you're above ground with no victims in sight. So all you can kill during this period is kill time. Looking for blood buckets to feed Grandpa, or if you're the right character, setting traps. If you feed Grandpa enough blood, or a victim makes a noise, Grandpa wakes up and will periodically scream to alert you to victim locations, if the victims are moving. <laughs> If you keep feeding Grandpa, his level increases until it gets to a certain point where victims will always be highlighted on a map with nowhere for them to hide. I appreciate integrating Grandpa into the gameplay somehow, but it would have been nice to see this game go more for realism, seeing as it's based on a movie that claims realism. Giving Grandpa magic powers feels like some serious immersion-breaking video game logic. <laughs> Playing as the family can be satisfying, though, especially seeing the executions play out once you're able to wear a victim down enough. It's like a murderous game of hide-and-seek. It's very straightforward if you play as a killer. Just kill and make sure the victims can't use the exits. I know there are games like this one with a lot more depth, but as someone who isn't really into multiplayer, with a preference for single player, I appreciate the Friday the 13th game for its simplicity. 
I could just jump into it without having to re-familiarize myself with complicated game mechanics. And I like the simplicity in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game, too. You aren't just stabbing at victims as a killer, though. Each killer has their own specialties that set them apart. Leatherface is a chainsaw that needs to be revved up, and it can stall if you're not careful. The cook can hear when victims are nearby if he stops and listens in their direction. The hitchhiker can set traps. Johnny can track a victim's footprints. And Sissy can, uh, burp poison gas. I'm starting to think Sissy is just the director's fetish. I mean, she's also barefoot with those dirty feet, dear lord. I wouldn't be surprised if they introduce a Sissy Inflation DLC. <laughs> The only real challenge of being a killer is navigating the levels. They're bigger than they seem, with multiple floors to navigate, so it can be like finding a needle in a haystack to search for victims, which, you know, you need to have something to make being a killer tricky. But the game doesn't have a map system, so it's easy to get lost in a level if you're a killer. The maps are labyrinthine, especially the basement. There are so many barriers that most of the killers can't get past, and unless you're memorizing the layouts, it's a leap of faith if you find the right door to reach a victim, or at least exit the basement. The house in the movie was cluttered, but the game is even more cluttered. I don't know why the family would make it so hard for themselves to walk around their own goddamn home. Instead of giving you a map, you can see through walls for brief periods to get an idea of where teammates and landmarks are. But then you gotta figure out the path to get to those places, and if your specific character can even go down that path. The maps aren't open, and they can be a pain in the ass to navigate, and you don't really have much of an idea of where the map's boundaries even are. It'd be nice if the game included an offline exploration mode, so you could learn the maps and just take in the atmosphere. I don't think it would require that much effort to implement, but effort is in short supply in the game industry. Games are sold in pieces for a premium now. Maybe you'll get the rest later for free, or more likely it's paid DLC, or even more likely, maybe the game will just die. Completely unfinished. I have some real mixed feelings about the Texas Chainsaw Master game's mechanics and its new characters, but even though the maps are annoying to navigate, I gotta say, they did a hell of a job making the locations from the original movie. There are only a few maps, based on iconic locations like the house and the gas station, that have day and night cycles to make it seem like there are more maps than there really are, but what is there is faithfully recreated. The whole game's aesthetic is authentic to the original movie, from the maps down to the looks of the three returning characters. They had one movie to work with for this game, and they made sure to get the visuals right to an obsessive degree. I do gotta also point out that the basements in the maps are a very subtle nod to Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2's underground tunnels beneath Texas Battleland, and that's neat, but it makes sense for an abandoned theme park to have a complex network of utilidors. I don't know how the family could have these massive underground tunnels built beneath their isolated Texas properties, but whatever. The underground tunnels are the major flaw to the game. No matter the map, they all look the same, and it's just horrible to find your way around no matter the character. It's like playing Pac-Man from a third-person perspective instead of top-down. I honestly appreciate the dedication to bringing back the style of the first film, though. Part of why the sequels have let me down is that they all gave up on gritty realism in favor of trying to reach mainstream audiences. This feels like the first Texas Chainsaw thing that makes an effort to be consistent with the original movie. When the sequels have tried to do that, there are always flaws to it that makes it seem like lip service, a failed attempt to try to get some fan credibility. It is amazing the developers went so hard on recreating the first movie exclusively for a video game without modern flourishes to try to reach a mainstream audience, because even though the original movie is the best and my favorite, most people I know haven't seen it. They only know the mediocre Hollywood remake and don't even know it is a remake, that the 1974 movie even exists, so hopefully this game will get more people to see that film or at least be aware of it. The developers didn't just do a good job recreating the original movie, but also the game does a great job of making you feel like you are in a horror movie. The moment-to-moment -moment stuff like narrowly escaping or killing somebody who thought they were safe. Hey, how you doing? Oh, you just walked into this. Oh, sweet. Savage as fuck. 
When the moment is just right, this game sings. The gameplay of Texas Chainsaw Massacre is iffy but fun, and the maps are beautifully rendered but annoying to navigate, but the real flaw with the game is its nature as an online game. If you don't have any friends at the moment online to play with you, and you just want to jump into the game, even near release, you could be waiting a while to find a match, and even when you do find a match, you'll probably wait a while longer to find more players to start the match with. And I've had a couple matches where early into the match, all the players were disconnected, even before the match was about to begin. It's frustrating, and there's only one game mode, so I don't know why it's gotta be a pain to start playing it, but it might be a lack of players who wanna be victims. Surviving as a victim is satisfying, but killing victims is just so much more fun. It leaves me with a lot of doubts about what this game's lifespan will be. What's there in the one mode is fun, but it can get repetitive. You'll see everything the game has to offer pretty quickly. Even with outrights issues, Gun might just abandon this game anyway, shift it off to another company, and move on to the next thing. They don't have a stellar track record as a publisher. The other factor to keep in mind too is that this game is exclusively online multiplayer. So eventually these servers will go off and you'll just never be able to play the game. Which is pretty vexing if you fucking paid for the game. The thing is though, I didn't have to pay a cent for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. Eh, kinda technically. I played it through my Game Pass subscription on PC, and if you have an Xbox, it's also available through Game Pass there. That's the only way I can recommend playing this game, if you already have Game Pass, so you don't have to pay $40. Cost electricity is enough to drive a man out of business. <laughs> Unless you're a hardcore fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and like asymmetrical games, you could probably skip buying this game. And if you do buy it, don't get it digitally. Get it physically, so you'll at least have a physical item to add to a Texas Chainsaw collection, or at least something to sell used later. Maybe someday the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game will be worth $40, more than half the price of a content-rich game like Baldur's Gate 3 or Tears of the Kingdom or probably even the upcoming Starfield, but it definitely isn't worth $40 bucks now. Now. Even on sale for $20, what's here still doesn't feel like much for half price. <laughs> It makes me even question why they made a Texas Chainsaw Massacre asymmetrical game that's so lacking in content. They could have easily used the license for the first movie to make a story-based single-player game connected to the original film, something like Silent Hill or Resident Evil or even Until Dawn, which would have set this game apart from all the other asymmetrical games out there based on horror movies, but instead it just seems like they greedily followed a trend even though they didn't really have a lot to work with licensing-wise for an asymmetrical game, like the Evil Dead game did. Instead of making something really special out of a very special film, they just made something kind of fun but disposable. That'll be dead and forgotten not long from now. I give the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game a Slaughter Family out of Sawyer Family. The Saw, the Saw is family. <laughs> Well, you know, if they make a Halloween asymmetrical game next, I'll complain, but I'll still fucking play it. I'll take what I can get. While I still have your attention, subscribe to the Gulag channel, which will be returning very soon with a riff view of Scooby-Doo The Mystery Begins, and I'll be in the video too. Please subscribe. It's nearly finished, I swear. Gosh, I wish I had a friend. Yeah, it really is great. This video is made possible through the pledges of my Patreon supporters, and I'd like to give a very special thanks to the kind folks pledged to my shoutouts tier. All of the support on Patreon means a lot to me, and it helps my dark influence continue to grow. If you like this video, like it, and if you loved it, click the subscribe and bell buttons for more vids. Be sure to also keep in touch by following me on social media at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dr. Wolfula. While I still have your attention, consider pledging to my Patreon to support the channel and get bonus content like previews, VI IP Discord server access, private movie night streams, and credits in videos. Consider pledging at patreon.com slash drwolfula. Also, check out official Dr. Wolfula t-shirts and other merch on tpublic.com slash user slash drwolfula. Thanks for watching. See you all next time. Dr. Wolfula signing out.